Let's raise tonight the big questions. Has the time come to simply scrap the sedition law as it stands today? Is the Modi government serious in re-examining section 124A sedition law? Or is the government simply trying to buy time? Who should decide whether the law should be watered down, stay as they are, or indeed scrap? The judiciary or the legislature? Joining me now, Justice Pradeep Nandrajog, former judge of the High Court. He was the uh, Chief Justice of the Bombay High Court. Satyapal Jain, additional solicitor general of the country, is joining me. Dushyan Dave, senior advocate. Supreme Court and Abhinav Chandrachud, Advocate, Bombay High Court. Appreciate all four of you joining us here on the news today. Let me first come to the judge who I spoke to earlier, Justice Nanda Jog. Do you believe that the time has come to scrap the sedition law as it is? Should the Supreme Court be doing it as of now or should the decision be left to the political executive where the Modi government is suddenly saying they are ready to re-examine the law? Should the courts give the government this time? Well, I will put it to you like this. If you look at jurisprudences abroad, and even in the most liberal democracy where freedom of expression and speech is protected is the United States of America, mm -hmm. they also have a law relating to sedition. Mm -hmm. It's there in Canada, it's there in Europe, it's there in United Kingdoms. Therefore, my personal view would be that to scrap it, lock, stock and barrel may be difficult, mm -hmm. irrespective of, we may say, whether this is the right time or some other time is the right time. I think, going by the international trends, it would be difficult to scrap it altogether. But the problem is the wording of section 124a mm -hmm. as we find its reflection in the penal court but may i may i point out justice nanda Jog, the fact is even the united kingdom abolished sedition law in 2009 the country which in a sense brought this colonial law into this country which was used against the likes of mahatma gandhi dating back to the 19th century is when this law was brought into our statute books should india be retaining it in the manner that we have, it gives such wide discretion today to police officers to charge someone with sedition. If you see the scrapping of the sedition law abroad has a linkage with the law of treason which is retained. Mm -hmm. So whether you expand the scope of treason, mm -hmm. um, if you would see that Sedition as a crime is nearly allied to treason and frequently precedes treason. Mm -hmm. So in that context, my view is that the problem in India lies with the three explanations to 124A. And the judgment of the Supreme Court in Kedarnath, where they brought in the concept of that if what you say amounts to bringing or attempting to bring in public order issues. Mm -hmm. That became a very wide interpretation to the concept of sedition. So if we were to take corrective action mm -hmm. and reinterpret the three explanations, then I think it should suffice. So you're effectively calling in some way for a watering down of the law, not for scrapping it. Let me widen this and Dushan, the way you take this, because let's look at the news point from today. Today, before the Supreme Court, the government counsel, Tushar Mehta, Solicitor General says, we are ready to re-examine, reconsider the law, please defer the hearings. Now the same government on Saturday had said that the uh, sedition law was absolutely necessary. Suddenly, two days later, a day before the hearing on Tuesday, they changed their mind. Therefore, do you believe that the court should now give the Modi government, as they appeared to do today in court, the time to re-examine the law? Or do you believe the Modi government is simply buying time because to save itself from the embarrassment of Chief Justice Ramana deciding maybe tomorrow to scrap the law? Well, it's not so easy, you know, and the answer to your question is also uh, extremely difficult. Uh, 
Yeah, I think Supreme Court uh, will uh, have to perhaps refer the matter to the uh, larger bench of seven justices if it really wants to scrap the law, declare it to be unconstitutional because Kedarnath was a judgment of uh, five uh, learned judges of the Supreme Court. Uh, having said that, I would say that, look, uh, government uh, perhaps uh, may uh, uh, want to genuinely consider because, see, fortunately for the country and fortunately for the government, mm -hmm. the government is advised by Mr. K. K. Venugopal, the Attorney General of India, mm -hmm. who is an extremely sober and very respected lawyer and he's extremely sound about these issues. Mm -hmm. In fact, he did flag, uh, you know, in the hearing earlier that uh, the law uh, may, uh, requires perhaps a lot of uh, tuning down uh, mm. so and to provide some kind of safeguards so that the law is not abused. I, I think that was the, perhaps the beginning of uh, rethinking on the part of the government. Uh, but having said so, I mean, I won't be surprised. Uh, it's very difficult to speculate what mm. really went into the mind of the government over the weekend. But uh, it is possible government may be wanting to buy some time because uh, uh, as I understand this government, mm -hmm. I don't think this government is really going to accept uh, removal of uh, uh, a sedition law altogether mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, this government wants to, uh, uh, I think, have, have it and uh, use it uh, as indiscriminately as it has in last so many years. And many innocent people have been really charged with sedition law. So I, I don't know. I'm not sure what really is in the mind of the government. But, but if it, it is in, seriously considering to reconsider, mm -hmm. it's a welcome step. And should should a deadline be, very, be given? I, it, it no, no, should, a, well, Mr. Dave, should the courts give a deadline and tell the government, look, this cannot be an open-ended reconsideration. You can't, you know, because remember, Justice Ramanna retires towards the end of August. Should the, uh, so, uh, should the Supreme Court say, look, in the next three months, by first week of August, come back to us and tell us what you're doing. If you don't come back to us, we will presume that you're not serious. Well, if I were the Supreme Court, I would give them three days. If three they days. bring farm laws in no time and scrap them in no time, this is the government which, you know, uh, treats parliament like uh, uh, it's uh, some kind of a, you know, uh, I think uh, club. And uh, therefore it passes any kind of law that it wants to and scraps the laws as it wants to. So if government is serious, then government can scrap the law within 24 hours. Or they can even convene a special session of parliament if parliament is not in session. So three months is too long a period according to me. I, uh, I think government, uh, Supreme Court should not give that kind of a time. Okay. And uh, they should really ask the government what exactly they want. Are they seriously considering to really remove mm -hmm. the, the section altogether or to provide safeguards as the learned attorney general has said. So I think uh, the Supreme Court perhaps would be well uh, within its right to say mm -hmm. that we will not give uh, you know, uh, that kind of a long time uh, to okay. this government looking to its history and looking to how parliament functions under this government. Let me turn that to Satyapal Jain because you've heard Dushan Dave, who seems to believe that the government is trying to buy time. He still is not sure of the government's intention. The reason Satyapal Jain for the skepticism about the government on sedition law, the figures. According to the NCRB, the National uh, Crime Records Bureau, between 2016 and 19, number of cases filed under Section 124A sedition increased by 160%. Rate of conviction dropped to 3.3%. Out of 96 persons arrested in 2019, only two were convicted. 13,306 people have been booked in 867 sedition cases between 10, 2010 and 2020. On one hand, the government says, we want to re-examine the law. We believe this is a colonial law. Mr. Modi believes that this is 75 years of independence. We should not have a colonial law. But the police is going across the country, imposing sedition on all kinds of people from a teenage environmental activist like Disha Ravi to journalists. The sedition law to even Navneet Rana for Hanuman Chalisa. So what does the government want? Is it serious or not? See, there are three small questions in a big question that you have put to me. Number one, about the validity of the act. Number two, intentions of the government. Number three, certain cases where there is an allegation that it has been missed. So far as the intention of the government is concerned, I think there is no reason to doubt the intention of the government. The government has shown its magnanimity. And in view of all that in chances which have been cited, all those things which have been said, the government of India, led by Sri Narendra Modi ji, has very fairly said that we are ready to re-examine it. No, 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 please reconcile, sir, sir, sorry to interrupt, please reconcile what you have just said with the figures I have put out. 
You are I'm saying Mr. Yeah. Modi's government is serious about re-examining sedition law, but the police across the country, many of them BJP ruled states, is going ahead filing sedition case after sedition case. See, I said there are three sub questions put by you: one yes. about the intention and law and the issues. Yes. I am first applying to that. There is no reason to doubt the intention of Modi government. Okay. He has very fairly said they will examine it, and after examination, it will come back to the Supreme Court. Whether it is three months, four months, mm -hmm. that will be ultimately decided by the Supreme Court tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So far as the validity of the party, this active clause is concerned, mm -hmm. it's not something which has been enacted by Modi government. This law was enacted in 1860, 1870, mm -hmm. and not that its validity is being challenged for the first time. Let's not forget a five judges bench of the Honorable Supreme Court, which is being doubted by the three judges bench. After has the validity of this law, though, as the Honorable Judge pointed out, it modified and said only the uh, activities involving incitement to violence. Or intention, or tendency to create public disorder, or cause disturbance of public peace will amount to sedition. This was somewhere in 1962. That's 62, so sir. Not, that is 60 yes, yes, years 62, ago. Saying, 60 I'm years ago, Kedarnath versus State of Bihar yes. is 60 years ago, sir. Yes, that is what I am saying. I am saying the same thing. For 60 years, there has been no serious challenge to the judgment. It's for the first time now during this period because of certain cases where the allegation is. That it is being used by the state government, state police yes, for misused, misused, abuse, being abused. That is a simple thing. Yes. I am saying that this issue, so far as the abuse part is concerned, mm -hmm. as a lawyer and my friends will agree. I don't think any law in the country ab about which there is no allegation that it has been misused. Mrs. Gandhi misused Article 356 for dismissing very government number of times. The emergency was a misuse. There are number of misuse of cases involving people in murder, NCRT everywhere. जनरलोर धनंजय अभी डॉक्टर अभिनाभ चंद्रचूत यू रोट अ बुक रिपब्लिक ऑफ रेटरिक फ्री स्पीच एंड द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया इन द केदारनाथ वर्सेस स्टेट ऑफ बिहार केस विच सत्यपाल जैन जस्ट साइटेड 1962 कोर्ट सेड अ सिटीजन हैज अ राइट टू से और राइट वॉट एवर ही लाइक्स अबाउट द गवर्नमेंट और ही और क्रिटिसाइज और कॉमेंट सो लॉन्ग एज ही डज नॉट इनसाइड पीपल टू वायलेंस अगेंस्ट द गवर्नमेंट एस्टैब्लिश बाई लॉ और विद द इंटेंशन ऑफ क्रिएटिंग पब्लिक डिसऑर्डर नाउ द वरी इज दिस इज वेरी वाइडली इंटरप्रिटेड ड्यू बिलीव द रियल चैलेंज इज टू फ्रेम गाइडलाइंस फॉर फॉर कोर्ट और एंड इन पर्टिकुलर फॉर द पुलिस और ड्यू बिलीव दैट द लॉ इट सेल्फ एज द यूनाइटेड किंगडम एज डन नीड्स टू बी जंक्ट so more than guidelines i think this is a golden opportunity for the government to bring about some reform in the law even if the government does not want to scrap the law altogether and i can think of at least three things that the government can do if it doesn't want to scrap the law of sedition which is really to bring the law in line with mm -hmm. the law of sedition as it was in england in 1832 and from 1832 onwards mm -hmm. in other words 190 years ago in england sedition was considered a misdemeanor and not a felony Mm -hmm. that meant that sedition was a bailable offence in other words if you were accused of the offence of sedition you were entitled to be released on bail as a matter of right the british of course made it a non bailable offence in india for obvious reasons there's no reason why we need to continue with this colonial hangover the second point is that since 1832 in england sedition was what we would now call a non cognizable offence mm -hmm. in other words if the police want to investigate a, the crime of sedition they require a warrant from a magistrate they can't arrest somebody without obtaining a warrant from a magistrate now surprisingly the british in colonial india made sedition a non cognizable offence we in independent india in 1974 when the new criminal procedure code came into being made it a cognizable offence for the first time in india's history so this is a self in inflicted the wound it's a self goal mm -hmm. and this is something that we should do away with and thirdly sedition since 1832 in england being a misdemeanor was punishable with only 2 years in prison but the british made it punishable in india with life imprisonment it continues to be punishable with life life imprisonment in india mm -hmm. so there's no reason why these three reforms cannot be enacted of course if the government wants to carry out a more serious exercise mm -hmm. to determine whether the law of sedition should be scrapped altogether there are two things that the government needs to look at 
first and foremost the government must realize that there are a negligible number of sedition cases being registered on a year on year basis so if you look at the past 5 years years the national crime records bureau will tell you that sedition cases constitute 0.8% of the offenses against the state that are registered each year in 2020 for example there were 73 sedition cases as against over 5000 cases of offenses against the state over a thousand murder cases over 2000 theft cases and the conviction rate as you rightly said rajdeep in sedition cases is very low the average conviction rate is 20% in the past 5 years in 2019 as you rightly pointed out it was 3% mm -hmm. but it has a chilling effect on free speech on journalism and so on okay so what the government if i can really just end by saying this mm -hmm. what the government needs to do is in the past 5 years it needs to examine the 20% cases where a conviction was obtained for sedition and the government needs to examine that was sedition really necessary in order to secure a conviction or could the accused have been convicted or and was the accused convicted of other offenses for example waging war against the state and so on right. if so then really sedition has been reduced to a dead letter in india as it was in england since 1832 of course as you rightly pointed out in 2009 sedition was scrapped in england so you know in a way what you are also suggesting that you need to create safeguards and therefore dushyant dave let's come from what you know a wonderful history of the law has been given to us just now by dr abhinav chandrachudan you've got satyapal jain saying look misuse of the law cannot be reason enough to scrap the law however the fact is that we've reached a stage where if we look at misuse of the law as reason to scrap you'll scrap a lot of other laws why in your view should sedition specifically be looked at as a law that the supreme court now needs to enact is it because all governments have used sedition uh to to in a way settle political scores as we just saw in maharashtra or we've seen in fact in other states as well in the past with disha ravi for example the center wanted to send a, a chilling message perhaps to young environmental activists well <clears throat> I, i don't know whether uh, you know the offense of sedition really yeah, takes place in this country any longer i mean mm -hmm. yes you can uh, talk about certain mao maoist organizations which may indulge in certain seditious activities but besides that the kind of cases which are being registered against citizens across the country mm -hmm. are not at all anywhere near the definition of sedition they are completely normal cases mm -hmm. in which the police goes and trigger happy police just you know slaps because the political parties want it mm -hmm. see the police in this country today is working at the dictate of the political party in power mm -hmm. and they know they take the cue mm -hmm. so uh, when they realize that a particular journalist has said something against the chief minister of the state mm -hmm. including you know west bengal mm -hmm. uh, they simply put the charge of sedition against the journalist so they the thing has become extraordinary the uh, problem is it's not just the you know uh, that the uh, the uh, section stands on the statute book it's not just that the police is abusing it the real problem is that when this accused is brought first time before the magistrate he should simply look at the charge and say scrap this on the first day so you are no are you, saying, are you saying are you saying that sir just yes. a minute are you it, saying that it, sir at uh, mr dave as long as the law remains on the statute books the police will be prone to misuse it therefore rather than have the law there are enough old, if there is someone creating disaffection so called disaffection of public order there's enough within the existing ipc without needing sedition laws absolutely and uh, the problem is that the judiciary does not save the citizens the real challenge is that the reason why it should be scrapped is that judiciary has a you know it just turns the uh, uh, other way uh, if the judiciary were to say in all these cases which the figures that you gave Uh, with a uh, conviction rate of three percent, what prevented the judge on the first day to say that this is not a seditious case? Because Kedarnath says that sedition must be followed by violence, mm -hmm. not just uh, likelihood of violence, actual violence. In all these cases, there is no violence. Mm -hmm. So, what is the point of you know charging citizens with sedition? Judiciary looking the other way and allowing people to be arrested and spend a lot of time in jail. Let you are doing something which is extraordinarily wrong against the fundamental rights of citizens. So, this section naturally needs to be removed. So long as it remains on the statute book, abuse in this country is not going to be impossible to prevent. and protection by judiciary is not easy to come around you want to reply to that uh, satyapal jain there is a sense that the time has come 
you know, 75 years after independence, I, if a law which even the British, which brought it in this, to, to this country, have removed, we have tightened it. We've made it non-bailable in this country at times. See, so far as the uh, law being 70 years old is concerned, I, I remember once Justice M.M. M. Punchi pointed out in the court that law is not like the hot jalebis, that the latest is more important and the older is not that important. Law is law, maybe 70 years, maybe 100 years, maybe 200 years. So far as Mr. Dushan Dave's points are concerned, I think indirectly he agrees with my suggestion that let there be sufficient safeguards. Let the Honorable Judge examine on the first date of hearing itself whether any prima facie case is made out or not. Let the judiciary examine the whole case objectively without any further delay. Unfortunately, there is a simple, very simple uh, principle of uh, criminal jurisprudence. But if there is a doubt on you, you will be booked. And if there is a doubt, that is sufficient for your acquittal. So on doubt you will be booked, on doubt you will be acquitted. But that is the law of the land. So but what I'm suggesting is this. Now mm -hmm. the government has come out with a, with a proposal that it will re-examine the issue. Let all concerned give their suggestions to the government so that the government examines all the pros and cons of this And issue. what happens to... No, 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 Mr. Jain, while the government re-examines, and in this country we know what re-examination means, what happens to existing cases? I've got a sedition case against me. There are many others who have... What happens to our cases? See, Please tell me. No, are they to be, no, no, are they to be kept in abeyance or not? That is the question which has been put up by the Honorable Judges of the I am asking you. The government today. And government will be responding to that tomorrow morning. No, what and is your view? Even if the Supreme Court wants to re-examine it and overrule this uh, judgment, Kedar Singh's Singh case, it is a five-judge judgment. They will have to constitute yes. a bench of seven judges. Up to middle of July, the Supreme Court is closed. I think Supreme Court itself may not be able to okay. decide it. By, by the end of this year, let me in the normal course. Therefore, let, let the government come out with its proposals. What are the suggestions that are received by the government and what are the suggestions that are accepted by the government? That I think, to my mind, will be more reasonable and time saving. You know, I think if the government is serious, Radhip, government as a gesture of goodwill mm -hmm. should immediately say that all cases pending against the persons, except where violence has been uh, in, incited, mm -hmm. actual violence, are stand withdrawn. And then government should debate about it. You know, let, let me take that to Justice Nandrajog, who, as I said, I spoke to earlier. The government says in the, uh, today to the Supreme Court, Justice Nandrajog, give us some time to reconsider and re-examine the law. But while this law is being re-examined and reconsidered, what should happen to existing sedition law cases? What happens to future cases that might be filed? Someone may be arrested tomorrow for sedition while the government is re-examining the law. So should the entire statute be held in abeyance? while the government re-examines and reconsiders it or not, sir? Yes, I think at least bail should be granted because it's an admission by the government of the day that as interpreted by the executive, probably the law needs some correction, if not a complete scrapping. So that itself should lead the court to be liberal in granting bails. The problem is actually lying in the courts where they are not really reading, even Kedar Nath, even in its wider sweep, doesn't go as wide that any dissatisfaction with the policy of the government would be sedition. The, even Kedar Nath says that the expression of dissatisfaction should reach the level of creating public order issues. You know, uh, let, uh, Dr. Chandrachud, in conclusion, do you also uh, believe that while the government decides to re-examine these cases, uh, the, uh, the statute should be held in abeyance? We've had tribal activists in Jharkhand against whom hundreds have had sedition cases filed against them. Many of them have spent months in jail. Do you believe the time has come for this country to look at this? At least if the, if the Modi government is serious about it, then the first seriousness of its intent should be we are staying across the country. Can they do that? Across the country, tell state governments that look, no more sedition cases and existing sedition cases are being held in abeyance? So Rajdeep, the question that you have asked poses a very interesting separation of powers uh, dilemma. Mm -hmm. Because the question that arises in my mind, I'm not sure I know the answer, is that can the center, of course, law and order being a state subject, can yes. the center issue directions to the states 
not to pursue prosecutions and what are the implications can the center do so in some corruption case in some state mm -hmm. it will it will have some far reaching implications if the central government can issue directions to the state government to go easy on some prosecutions that having been said of course i must i i, I just wanted to say that gandhi had always called sedition the sword of democles hanging over the necks of indian patriots and today it's the sword of democles hanging around the necks of uh, of journalists uh, it's it's no it's it's no coincidence that the british did not introduce sedition into the indian penal code in 1860 because at that time the indian penal code was supposed to be a model penal code for england and england didn't have the offense of sedition it was inserted in 1870 once they decided that well this needs to be uh, brought more in lines with what we need to do in india and right. amended in 1898 so let's go back to 1860 uh, and let's make it a model penal code um and, and let's go back to the time in 1832 in england and try and at least reform the law if not scrap the law entirely all i can say is touche uh let's hope that the words that you've just spelt out are words that are heard and echoed tomorrow in the courts of this country it's time to relook at this law and it's time for the government of the day to make sure that its intent is actually backed by action on the ground its bona fides are on test and we'll see what happens in the court tomorrow thank you all very much for joining me here on my top talking point tonight